NBC presents The First Nighter Program, starring Nolan Soule and Barbara Luddy. Theater time on the Great White Way. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to attend the premiere of a new show at the Little Theater off Times Square. And here is our host for the evening, the genial First Nighter. Good evening. Traffic promises to be heavy tonight, so my cab is waiting. Won't you step in? All right, driver, to the Little Theater. Up Broadway, across 42nd Street, past gay crowds and twinkling signs into the heart of theater land. There ahead is the Little Theater off Times Square. Well, here we are. Have your tickets ready, please. Have your tickets ready, please. Good evening, Mr. First Nighter. The usher will show you to your seats. Thank you. We'll go right in. Tonight's play is a bright and broad comedy entitled The Honest Dope by Ben Starr, starring Nolan Soule and Barbara Luddy, featuring Verna Felton and High Averback, and is produced and directed by Joseph T. Ailey. Curtain. First curtain. There's the signal for first curtain. The house lights are out. And here's the play. My Sally, don't you look pretty. Mm, thanks, Mom. Got a date tonight. With Harry? No, with Stanley. Oh, that dope. But don't talk like that, Mom. Stanley has his points. I know. One of them is his head. <laughs> now, Mom, please. You know that I've been going with Stanley ever since he was a little boy. That's just it. Don't you think you should start keeping company with men now? <laughs> now take Harry Hopper. He's nothing but a big, overstuffed, conceited braggart. Sally, you can't deny that someday Harry will be a big man at Wilkins Refrigeration Company. Well, Stanley works at Wilkins. Someday he'll be a big man there, too. <laughs> it isn't Stanley's fault if he's not aggressive like Harry. That's hardly the word for it. Stanley and Harry both went into the army at the same time, and what happened? Harry came out a captain, and after four years, Stanley came out a full-fledged private. <laughs> That's not true. He wasn't a private. He was a private first class. Oh, honey, I like Stanley. He's a very nice boy. It's just that I like to see you make a good marriage. But, Mom, it isn't fair to blame Stanley. It's just that he's so blamed honest. Oh, I suppose he could have got himself a few raises by now if he asserted himself more and sort of put on a little front. That's it exactly, dear. By the way Harry struts around town, you'd think he owned Wilkins' factory. And the way Stanley crawls around, you'd think he was carrying it. <laughs> That's Stanley. How do you know? Well, when Harry comes here, he rings the bell like a man four or five times, and he bangs on the door. And when Stanley comes, all you hear is one teeny pipsqueak ring, just like a mouse. Just because Stanley doesn't break the door down. Break the door down? Ha! Why, Stanley couldn't break a wet cracker that's been sitting overnight in a cup of tea. <laughs> You're just upset because Stanley doesn't bring you chocolates like Harry. Sally, I'll bet you a box of chocolates that Stanley will stay outside that door all evening and not ring the bell again. All right. It's a bet. Don't forget. I like the kind with almonds. <laughs> oh, all right. You win. Well, 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 if it isn't Stanley, dear. I was just telling Sally how nice it is to have you drop around. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. I I've got something for you. A box of chocolates? No, the evening paper. <laughs> it was lying out on the front steps. Oh, thank you, Stanley. I won't forget this. Will you children excuse me? I think I'll go and have myself a headache. <laughs> Gee, Sally, you look pretty. So do you. I mean, thank you, Stanley. 
Shall we start for the movie? Well, if you don't mind, Sally, there's something I'd like to ask you first. Well, go ahead, Stanley. Ask me. Um, would you please sit on your sofa? Hmm? I have to ask it there. <laughs> That's where everybody asks it. <laughs> All right. I'm sitting. Go ahead, ask it. Uh, Sally? <clears throat> Sally, we've known each other ever since we were seven. No, Stanley, since we were six. Remember, we met at your birthday party the day you shoved my face in your cake. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Seven was when I caught poison ivy and I passed it to your mother. <laughs> well, Sally, what, what I want to ask is... Um, Sally, Sally, I'd like to know if... Is everybody deaf? Can't you hear the doorbell? Uh, Sally, hmm? what are you doing on the floor on one knee? Did you lose a penny? I... Sally, maybe I'd better wait for another time. No, Stanley, please ask me. Hello, Sal, girl! <laughs> what in the dickens, Stanley? What are you doing on one knee? Shoe shine, boy? <laughs> Sally, look at what Harry brought me. A great big box of my favorite chocolates. Oh, nuts. How'd you know? <laughs> Mom, would you and Harry please wait on the porch a few minutes? Anything for you, Sal, gal. <laughs> Besides, I always said I wish your mom was a few years younger. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Miller, huh? <laughs> now, Harry, I'm old enough to be your, uh, uh your mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, now, come on, Mom. Uh, tell me the truth. What? Weren't you the second girl from the right in the Ziegfeld Follies? Oh, now, now, you weren't you? Get out. Get out. <laughs> Go on, Stanley. Stanley, I said go on. Sally, I didn't know your mother was a Follies girl. Oh, Stanley, Harry was just kidding. But he said she was... Stanley, must you believe what everybody says? Just because you're so honest it hurts doesn't mean everybody's that way. Sally, you aren't suggesting that I lie. No, but sometimes it might not hurt to sort of stretch the truth a little. No good ever came from cheating. Well, it's not exactly cheating. It's like when a, a fat woman wears a girdle. She takes what she has and sort of stretches a little here and a little there. And look what she can accomplish. Sometimes that causes abdominal pains. <laughs> yeah, I, I read once where... Oh, Stanley. Sally, where are you going? Harry, would you like to take me to the movies? Oh, would I, Sal gal? But, Sally, you had a date with me, and I haven't asked I just you... bought a new car. A new car? Can you afford it? No, but I tend to ask for a raise. It'll be a pleasure to go out with a man who goes after what he wants. Shall we leave, Harry? <laughs> You'll know you've been out with a sport tonight. We'll sit in the lounge, you Sal gal. <laughs> oh, darn it. And I was about to ask Sally an important question. Well, ask me, Stanley. Maybe I know the answer. Well, I'm, I, I'm afraid it wouldn't do, Mrs. Miller. Oh, don't be silly, Stanley. Go ahead, ask me. Well, all right, but it won't be the same. Uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Miller. Yes? Will you marry me? <laughs> And the curtain comes down on the first act of tonight's play in the little theater off Times Square. Smoking in the outer lobby or downstairs, please. Smoking in the outer lobby or downstairs, please. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Vincent Pelletier with an important message. Friends, I'd like to take a moment here to remind you about some of the great entertainment that's in store for you on NBC Radio. Each Wednesday evening, you'll be delighted with the wonderful humor of My Son Jeep. This pleasant family comedy is sure to work its way right into your heart. So make it a date to hear My Son Jeep, Wednesday evenings on most NBC stations. Then other wonderfully entertaining shows each Wednesday include The Best of Groucho, featuring the finest programs from Groucho Marx's You Bet Your Life series. Then there's The Great Gildersleeve, with Water Commissioner Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. And The Scarlet Pimpernel, starring Marius Goring in thrilling stories of the French Revolution. These great programs, My Son Jeep, 
the best of Groucho, the great Gildersleeve, and the Scarlet Pimpernel provide an evening packed with the best radio listening. So remember, for the finest of all radio entertainment, be sure to keep your dial set right here to NBC Radio. Curtain, second curtain. First night is a hurrying down the aisles to their seats. The lights are dimmed, and here's the second act of The Honest Goat. Sally, dear, cheer up. After all, you've got a date with a charming gentleman tonight. Oh, no, Mom, I'm going out with Harry. That's who I meant. We're taking a long drive in his new car, and I'm a little worried. What about? The car has an automatic clutch, and so is Harry. <laughs> well, dear, times haven't changed so much since I was a girl. I'm worried, Mom. I haven't heard from Stanley since I broke my date with him. He always used to come back when I mistreated him. Don't worry. He'll come back. He probably forgot where you lived. Well, it's, it's unusual because the Wilkins Company is having its annual picnic next week, and Stanley always takes me to that. Well, I'm sure Harry will be glad to take you. Mom, I want to go with Stanley. I can't help it. I love him. We'll talk about this later. I'll go let Harry in. What? Why, it's Stanley. That's right, Sal, gal. <laughs> and there's a cigar in your mouth. It's even lighted. Yep. They're all out of chewing tobacco. Stanley, I thought that was Harry at the door. Your ring is usually so shy and timid. Well, it's no longer time, Shimmed. I mean, shy and timid. <laughs> Stanley, dear, do you feel all right? Uh, why don't you sit down, Stanley? Maybe you're tired from ringing the doorbell so much. <laughs> Did Jack Dempsey ever get tired? No, but I don't see the connection. Well, maybe this will enlighten you, ladies. It's the Wilkins Company newspaper. Mm -hmm. What's this got to do with your actions, Stanley? Turn to page two, Sal, gal. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, what? Listen to this. The annual Wilkins Company picnic this year should be a great success. In addition to the regular amusements, there will be a ten-round boxing match. The winner will receive $100, and the referee will be our own Mr. Wilkins himself. As yet, the white-collar workers have not chosen their man, but the mechanical department thinks it has a winner in its corner, Mr. Stanley Slugger Higgins. Well, Stanley, don't just stand there. Get right over to the newspaper office. What for, Mrs. Miller? To deny this misprint, of course. It's not a misprint. I am going to fight. Stanley, how in the world did you get into this mess? Oh, it was easy. I just followed your advice. My advice? Sure. Don't you remember? You said I'd get along a lot better if I stretched the truth a little. You didn't stretch it, Stanley. It looks like you pulled it right out of shape. <laughs> oh, Stanley, you're liable to get hurt. Liable to? Huh? <laughs> Stanley, is your mother home? I believe so. Why? I think I'll go call her and let her know that no matter what happens, I'll stay with her for a few days after the fight. I guess your mother doesn't think I can win, Sal Gal. Stanley Higgins, stop calling me Sal Gal. I want to have a talk with you. Go ahead, Sal Gal. Uh, Sally? How did you happen to get rooked into this fight? Well, I got to thinking about what you said the other day. You know, how honest I was and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, yesterday, some of the men were discussing the picnic and the fight and... I got to talking. I told him about a fight I once had. First thing I knew, I was in. A fight you once had? How old were you at the time? Twelve. Just because you won a fight when you were twelve doesn't mean you can still fight. Oh, I didn't win. I lost. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the other kid almost knocked my head off. And I outweighed him, too. Stanley, you'll get murdered. Maybe, but it sure feels good to be a big shot. You know, I've never had that feeling before. Everybody stops me and says hello, just like I'm somebody. Why, this morning, Mr. Wilkins almost smiled at me, I think. Stanley, when I said for you to stretch the truth, I didn't mean for you to go this far. Gee, Sally, I've never lied in my life. I don't know how. Well, you're certainly learning in a hurry. Well, all I wanted to do was to impress the boys. I wanted to tell a little lie, so I, I opened my mouth, and, and you know what? 
the darndest things came out. Anyway, I did it all for you. Stanley, that that was sweet. And, and I want you to know that I'll always remember you just as you were before the fight. Your mother wasn't home, Stanley. But I called a few other people. Mr. and Mrs. Brown said to tell you goodbye. <laughs> I, I don't know why you people have my goose cooked. I've been training. You mean you've been shadow boxing and running in the park? No, but I, I've read all the fight stories I could get my hands on. <laughs> well, that's good training. If you want to write stories. Stanley, you have to learn to punch the bag. I tried it the other day, but I had to stop. Why? I got dizzy from watching the bag spin around. <laughs> well, then maybe you should uh, skip rope. Well, my nose bleeds when I jump up and down. <laughs> well, there's one thing you can do. You can take that silly cigar out of your mouth. Your face is turning green. Yeah. Now that you mention it, I did feel a little seasick. Um, do you think I overdid this lying business? We'll know better after the fight. Mm. Sally, now that I'm here, I may as well ask you the question I've been trying to. Oh, yes, Stanley. Yeah, now just a minute. <clears throat> um, Sally? Uh, the Marines! I'll go. <laughs> Hurry up, Stanley. Ask me. Sally? Yes, Stanley. Hello, Sal gal. Stanley, don't tell me you're still on the same knee. You'll get blisters, boy. <laughs> now, Harry, Harry, you and Sally ought to get started on your date. Uh, just a minute, Mom. Stanley wants to ask me something. Uh, Sally? Uh, what's new, Harry? Well, I say, Mom, did, did you hear about the moron who drowned himself? No. He wanted to get into the swim of things. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> now, now look here, Harry. Yeah. I have something important to ask Sally, so will you kindly be quiet? Oh, now, take it easy, Tarzan. Save that stuff for the ring. Oh, you know. <laughs> sure I do. I, I read the company paper. Uh, by the way, the white-collar workers were swamped with applications when everyone saw you were the opponent. <laughs> Did they pick one? Oh, yes. And Stanley better start praying because this guy will murder him. Is that so? Who is he? Me! <laughs> and the curtain comes down on the second act of tonight's play in the little theater off Smoking Times Square. In the outer lobby, please. Smoking downstairs or in the outer lobby, please. And here, ladies and gentlemen, once more, Vincent Pelletier. Friends, if you want your child to have the best elementary schooling you can give him, won't you get a pencil and paper and take down the address I'm going to give you at the end of this message? Unless we start preparing now, in a few years, our public schools will be as behind the times as the Little Red Schoolhouse. You see, because of the huge increase in our birth rate during and after the last war, it's estimated that by 1956, there will be some 7 million more children in elementary schools than there are now. Naturally, we must start preparing at once. More equipment will be needed, textbooks, playgrounds, and above all, more elementary school teachers. To help assure your child a proper education, join and work with local groups and school boards. And for free information about how people in other communities are improving their schools, write to this address. National Citizens Commission for the Public Schools, 2 West 45th Street, New York 19, New York. That's National Citizens Commission for the Public Schools, 2 West 45th Street, New York 19, New York. Curtain. Last curtain. There's the signal for the last curtain, the house lights are out, and here's the play. Sally! Sally, come on! Oh, I'm coming. Hurry up, dear, you'll be late for the funeral. And I mean, the, the fight. <laughs> oh, Mom, I'm so worried. Harry will tear Stanley apart. He won't tear him apart. Oh, of course he might grind him up a little. <laughs> oh, Mom, and it's all my fault. Nonsense. We all have to go sometime. <laughs> Mom, I'm going to Stanley. I want to be with him as much as I can. Oh, all right, go ahead. I'll see you at the picnic ground. <laughs> One, two. 
One. Two. One. Stanley. Oh, hello, Sally. Stanley, what are you what are you training for now? Two hours before the fight. I have to. I didn't train all week. <laughs> well, why not? I've been in bed with a wrenched back. Oh, dear. How'd you wrench your back? I fell out of a tree. Well, what were you doing in a tree, for heaven's sake? I was exercising by swinging on a branch, and the branch broke. Oh, Stanley, this is terrible. Harry's a better fighter. He's had some experience, and now you have to be sick. Don't worry, Sally. Harry really has only one advantage over me. What's that? I can't fight. <laughs> Stanley, there's only one thing to do. You will have to back out of the fight. Oh, I couldn't do that. Besides, I'd lose too much money if I did. What money? The money I bet on myself to win. Stanley, you didn't. How could you possibly bet on yourself? Sally, the odds were so big I couldn't pass it up. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're up to 50 to 1 against me. I can see there's no time to lose. We have to get you in shape. Do you have enough strength to last the fight? Sure. I just ate a big meal. Do you think that was wise? Of course. It was Mother's cooking. Have you <clears throat> sparred with anyone to get in shape? I went three rounds this morning, and I won all three. But that's wonderful. Whom did you box? Mother. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's pretty fast on her feet. Oh, dear, I, I wish a hurricane or something would break loose so they'd cancel the picnic. Well, you don't seem to have much confidence in me, Sally. Well, it's not that, Stanley. I... Sure, I have confidence in you. Why, look at that chest. <sighs> Thanks, Sally. And those biceps. You'll beat Harry easily. You really think so? Stanley, all you have to do to win is to keep telling yourself how good you are. You know, sort of stretch the truth a little. Yeah, you're right. I feel better already. It wouldn't surprise me if this fight ended in a knockout. It wouldn't surprise me either. <laughs> Go ahead, Sally. Go ahead, hit me. Huh? I said hit me. No, no, Sally, I'm afraid. No, I'll show you how I can take it. Go ahead. Well, all right. Ready? Mm-hmm. Here I come. <laughs> Stanley! Stan... Oh, my, he's unconscious. What? What happened? I hit you. With what? Well, I just doubled up my fist and hit you no, like this. No, never mind, Joe Lewis. Don't show me. Stanley, I'm afraid you have a glass jaw. I have? Well, look inside and see what you broke. <laughs> oh, no. Now, don't cry, Sally. He won't lay a glove on me. Oh, Stanley, if I can knock you out, what'll Harry do to you? Oh, I'm so worried. That makes two of us. <laughs> I watched Stanley train today. Well, how did he look? <gasps> oh, Mom. That's what I thought. Mom, Mom, have you been able to pick up any gossip about the fight? Who does the crowd think will win? I don't know, but everyone's calling Harry champ. I, I told Stanley to act tough. Maybe he can fool Harry. If he can, it'll be the biggest thing since 3D. <laughs> Attention, attention. The boxing match is about to begin. It'll be a ten-round fight to the finish. What does he mean, a fight to the finish? With Stanley in there, I can imagine. <laughs> oh, Mom, my knees are shaking. That's nothing, dear. Just imagine what Stanley's knees are doing at this minute. <laughs> Look, there's Harry in the ring. Ooh, he's pretty big, isn't he? Yes, isn't he? <laughs> there's Stanley. He's sort of... Sort of... Yes, isn't he? <laughs> you know, there really isn't much difference in their height and weight. It's just that Harry seems to have all his weight bunched up in muscles. And Stanley just seems to have all his weight 
bunched up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the fight is about to begin. There it is. Both fighters move in slowly. They're sort of feeling each other out. Harry lets go with a very light left, and Stanley is down. <laughs> the count is two, three. Stanley is moving. Four, five. He's up on one knee. Six, seven. Well, I'll be doggone. He's crawling around the ring. Eight, nine, and Stanley is up. If he rests after the count of ten, he may as well go to sleep. Harry seems to be having trouble landing another punch. Stanley is running away too fast. Harry, Harry your shoelace is untied. <laughs> oh, no, Stanley. Not that old trick. <laughs> Harry leans forward towards Stanley. Uh-oh. He's down. Well, what do you know? Three, four, five, six. I'd like a light. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner by a knockout in the first round, the new champ of Wilkins Company, believe it or not, Stanley Higgins. <laughs> It's a beautiful night, isn't it, Stanley? Uh-huh. You see, my advice did help you after all. What do you mean? Well, I heard you tell Harry his shoelace was untied. <laughs> oh, that was using your head. But his shoelace really was untied. What? You mean it wasn't a trick? No, of course not. I told him the truth and he didn't believe it. So he accidentally tripped on his shoelace and fell into my glove. <laughs> I guess you were right after all. Honesty is the best policy. Yeah, then I want you to be honest with me. Sally, all week now I've been trying to get an answer from you. I don't have a sofa here, but will you marry me? Yes, I will, champ. Mmm. Mmm, <laughs> tickles. <laughs> Remember one thing, though. You may be champ, but I knocked you out. You sure did, Sally. The first time I laid eyes on your pretty face. Oh, that's what I like. A man who tells the truth. <laughs> there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the premier performance of what looks like a new hidden play on the Great White Way at the Little Theater off Times Square. Miss Lottie and Mr. Soleil are taking bows. Now they're joined by Verna Felton, High Aberback, and Paul Dubois. Now the audience is giving them a great ovation. Next week, join us again and bring your friends for a mystery, Appearance of Murder. I saw one of the rehearsals and it's one of the best of its kind I've seen. Don't miss it next week at this same time. And now we move out of the theater and into the street. Is your cab, Mr. First Nighter? Thank you. Good night. Friends, if you like heartstrings in your stories... Be sure to read about Barbara Luddy and her wonderful family in the October issue of Radio TV Mira Magazine, which will be on your newsstands September 9th. The First Nighter program, a copyrighted radio feature, is an NBC Radio Network production starring Barbara Luddy and Olin Soule. The part of the First Nighter is played by Rye Billsbury. Tonight's play was pure fiction and did not refer to real people or actual events. Tonight... Dragnet returns to the air on NBC.